We are watching as Anthony Edwards looks on helplessly as with the score tied and under 10 seconds left, Nikola Jovic breaks to the basket on an out of bounds play and finishes an N1 that, after a Mike Conley missed three, gave the Miami Heat a win. In this loss, Anthony Edwards shot eight for 24 in an off night. It happens all NBA stars have them and also shot 14 of his 24 shots from three and made just four of those 14 shots. That is a number that might shock you, but it is a trend that is only only getting bigger. As to begin this year, Anthony Edwards is averaging 11.8 three-point attempts per game, which means he is currently attempting more three-pointers a night than Steph Curry did in his 2016 MVP winning season. Just last season, Ant averaged 6.7 threes a game. This is a drastic change and it gets even deeper. While putting up 11.8 three-pointers a night, Anthony Edwards still does not rank first in the NBA in three-point field goals attempted. That honor goes to Lamar Mello Ball, who was taking 13 threes a game. Jason Tatum, right behind Ant, is averaging 11.6. In fact, there are currently four players in the NBA averaging at least 11 threes a game, nine who are shooting at least nine, and 35 current players are taking seven three-pointers a game. Just last season, that number was at 22. In 2015, that number was four. In an era where a lot of people have said they do not enjoy the current three-point shooting NBA. This season, 17 Teams are attempting over 43s a game compared to last year where that number was just one. The Celtics are averaging 51.3 pointers a night. That is over half of the shots they are taking, which means we have to ask here, is this shooting the most effective way to play and to win basketball games? Is a star like Anthony Edwards maxing out his potential on the court with this type of shooting or has everyone lost their mind and gone too far? Is there a limit here? So what's up Mike here? And this video is about answers. This season has seen a drastic change in the NBA and there is no denying that. There's also no denying that the four leaders in three-point attempts, LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, and Tyrese Maxey, this season are all setting career highs in both three-point attempts and points per game. Ant has gone from 25.9 points to 28.3. LaMelo is averaging 29.4 points per game this year compared to 23.9 last season. If you want a LaMelo video on Saturday, let me know down below in the comments. If you want to and enjoy this content, it would be cool if you subscribe to come watch. Continuing to uncover the truth here though, I do not think it's an exaggeration at all to say that Anthony Edwards' 2025 season is going to have a rippling effect on all of basketball. NBA stars do not usually make such a drastic change to their game unless something is very wrong with it. Ant just easily had the most successful season of his career. In 2024, Anthony Edwards was not only second team all NBA, he led the Timberwolves over Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets in the playoffs. McDaniels up to 18. Edwards on the steal. Edwards, oh, what a move to the rack! Edwards working, leaning, spinning, shot, sticks it! Sticks it! I'm not saying who, Reg, but it looks kind of familiar. Late game, takeover in the mid post, fadeaway style. And then with Big Purr, lost in the Western Conference Finals to Luka and the Mavs. Bontich again, another three. Got it! He's a flamethrower! <laughs> He is on fire, 20 points. Luka drives on McDaniels with a lean, a foul, and a deuce. There's a snoop right now. Snoop. We as NBA fans and the NBA media and everyone in general saw this as a tremendous success for Minnesota, saw this as a tremendous success for Anthony Edwards. But after a summer with Team USA, after being able to hang out with his mentor, Kevin Durant, on a daily basis, it is clear that getting to the Western Conference Finals is simply not enough for Ant. It is title or nothing, which means to begin this year, Anthony Edwards is trying to do what he can to win a title. He has upped his three-pointers by a drastic margin because he believes that is what is going to help him win. Will it? Well, some say history repeats itself. The exact quote from Winston Churchill, though, is those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Which means if we look at past champions to learn, we will find the answers we are looking for. Trust me, I made this video. I know at the end we get there. As before the 2015 champion Golden State Warriors, NBA title winners had been built largely without the three ball. Despite the fact that the NBA three-point line was introduced in 1980, it took the league a long time to see how truly powerful the three ball is. In 1985, the league leader in three-pointers was Daryl Griffith with 3.3. Fourth in the league was Gus Williams with 2.2. Those numbers made a noticeable leap 10 years later. In 1995, John Starks averaged 7.6 three-pointers a game, while Vernon Maxwell at fourth 
fourth, averaged 6.9. Until the 2015 Golden State Warriors, though, until Steph Curry, the NBA stayed at that level, though. As in 2005, Quinn and Richardson led the NBA in three-point attempts with eight. Ray Allen was fourth. Then in 2015, Steph led the league with 8.1 three-point attempts, while Damian Lillard was fourth with seven. Now, again, there are 35 players taking over seven threes a game. Here are the three-point attempts and league rank of the 10 NBA champions before Golden State broke the three-point glass ceiling in 2015. From 2005 to 2014, we see a trend of a slight uptick in threes as we get to 2014, but nothing crazy. Then came 2015, then came MVP Steph, then came the Splash Brothers, and now here are the 10 NBA champions three-point attempts from 2015 to 2024. A huge, huge leap as the NBA not only played copycat, but also a narrative had been broken. Back during the 2015 season, Charles Barkley had one very strong belief. He thought the Golden State Warriors with 67 wins had no chance to win the NBA championship because, according to Chuck, Why do you hate the Golden State yeah. Warriors? <laughs> you know what's interesting? I'm not big on jump shooting teams. This, of course, seems like an absurd statement now, but we are living in the current. Barkley thought over four seven game series that eventually the jump shots were going to miss and that a jump shooting team was not going to be able to consistently win four playoff games in a single series. Now, of course, Chuck was wrong. One of the worst takes ever, but I've been there. What's important is that Chuck was a symbol of the lack of belief in three point shooting. Every team saw that it was good, but they still had not harnessed into its true power. The 2011 Mavericks are the perfect example of this. They won the championship. They finished third in three point attempt rate amongst their peers. They had a Hall of Fame three point shooting big man, along with a three point shooting sniper in Jason Terry, who averaged more points per game than LeBron in those 2011 NBA Finals. Those Mavericks as a team took just 21.6 threes a game. The revolutionary Splash Brothers Golden State 2015 Warriors, the ones who broke this glass ceiling, took just 27 threes a game themselves. As really, when looking at the Warriors, we find that Steph and Clay themselves took over half of their team's total attempts from three. Golden State as a team was balanced. They were very much built on defense. Three-point shooting was the most effective way for them to create their offense. That is a tremendous key here. Balance and roster construction. The two league leaders in NBA three-point shooting last season were the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. The Celtics, though, were also third in defensive rating in the entire NBA, while the Mavericks ranked just 18th. The 2015 Rockets are also the perfect example of needing balance on your roster to win the ultimate prize, the NBA title. The Houston Rockets actually had a chance to be the revolutionary team back in 2015, as it was the Rockets who led the NBA in three-pointers with 30 32.73s a night. After leading the league in three pointers, the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals beat them in five games as Golden State was first in the NBA in defense. Defense still is king. We know Anthony Edwards' only goal is to win a championship as soon as possible. An MVP that came with it would be the best bonus imaginable. Steph with the Warriors won multiple MVPs and multiple championships, while James Harden did win an MVP but has not reached the NBA Finals since his days in Oklahoma City. So an individual player and and a team can have tremendous success playing this way. But as we see, there is another side of the sword. Now, we do have to keep in mind that shots have to come from somewhere. A rise in three-pointers does mean that somewhere else on the court, shots are not taking place, and that, of course, comes in the mid-range. Analytics has stated that shots at the rim or at the three-point line are the most efficient by far, and that everything else is garbage, which means a lot of teams now have the strategy to keep opponents honest with mid-range shots to take them when they're open Open, but to really focus on either three-pointers or rim running. Anthony Edwards has caught on to that trend. In 2024, Ant took 456 shots from 10 feet to the three-point line. That was 24.2% of his total shots. Now in 2025, Ant has taken just 21 shots from the same range or 11.4% of his total shots. He has erased his mid-range game completely and instead has focused entirely on the three ball and that includes driving to the basket. In 2024, 24, Ant averaged 23.6% of his shots at the rim, and in taking those shots, he averaged 6.4 free throw attempts a game. Now, Ant is shooting just 16.8% of his shots at the rim. Darius Garland shoots 17.3% of his shots at the rim for comparison, and in theory, this 
doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel like an ultra explosive athletic Anthony Edwards should be giving up drives to the basket in order to just launch more and more threes. Only Anthony Edwards' true shooting percentage here tells a completely different story. As from 2022 to 2024, Ant has had around the same true shooting percentage, 56 in 2022, 56.4 in 2023, and 57.5 in 2024. But in 2025, we cannot deny that a true shooting percentage of 61.7% is not only a very noticeable increase, but also gives us real evidence to the fact that at least for now, Anthony Edwards' style of play is working. At this point, you may be asking, what exactly is the problem then? We're seeing success, we're seeing better analytics. Well, it appears people do not like this and possibly they don't wanna watch it. The viewership numbers tell no lies here. And in 2024, the NBA averaged 11.31 million viewers per game in the NBA finals. In 2017, that number was 20.38 million. It's not just streaming. The Super Bowl in 2017 averaged 111.32 million viewers. In 2024, that number jumped up to 120.25 million. The NFL is trending upward. The NBA has not been. Viewers are responding to this three-point outburst in a very negative way. Sports Media Watch reported that the NBA playoff viewership was down 12% last year compared to 2023, and a quick Google search with the words NBA TV viewership will provide results that are probably making Adam Silver a bit nauseous. The league is doing everything they can to fix this. The introduction of the NBA Cup in the regular season is is one of those things, but you can't force people to watch if they don't love the product. I love the NBA, but the viewer numbers are not lying. Finishing this though, here is the real question we have to ask. Here's the real question we are coming back to. Does high three-point shooting lead to wins? Because if it does, teams are not going to stop. The NBA is going to need to work around this in order to bring in new viewers. And the answer to does this work is a resounding yes. Yes, it works. The Celtics just led the NBA in three-point shooting last year, they won the title. The 2024 finals were played between the two highest three-point shooting teams in the league. The 2023 champion Denver Nuggets, yes, they were 26th in the NBA in three-point shooting, but they still took 31.23s a game. The 2015 Warriors, again, took 27. The 2014 Spurs, the last champion before this three-point explosion, averaged 21.43s a game, a number that would not even put you on the list in the NBA now. You'd be ranked 56 second. The NBA has yet to find a limit of what will not work when it comes to three-point shooting. The Celtics this year are sitting near the top of the NBA standing wise, and they are shooting over 50 threes a game. The Timberwolves are averaging 41.7, good for fourth in the league, as Anthony Edwards has gone from the next Michael Jordan to perhaps Steph Curry with a 40-inch vertical. Lonzo, look out. It was Ant all along. It's just the beginning of the year, but we will see long-term. What implications will this have? Let me know down below. Hello. What do you think about all this? Are you enjoying watching the NBA right now? And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video if you did like the content. Here also in the top left corner is a video on a trade that I guarantee you will break the NBA. And in the top right corner is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you.